And then I have another passage. So you're going to use your fingers to mark two different passages, which is Luke chapter 10, verses 1, verses 17 to 20. Oh, yeah. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 20. So let's read from Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. It says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. How were they? They were shut up. They were closed in. They had fortified walls, but yet they were closed in behind those walls. And the Lord said to Joshua, he said, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and its mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do for six days. For six days, they had to march around the city once every day. And the seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. So they took the ark of God, which represented the presence of God as they marched around Jericho. But the seventh day, you shall march around how many times? Seven times. So if they march around once for six days, and then on the seventh day, they march seven times, that's a total of, I don't know, 13 times, right? Seven times on that day. And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that you shall all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city shall come crumbling down and the people shall go up every man straight before him. The walls came crumbling down. Let's go to the next passage that we're reading from, which is Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. And it's going to be on the screen for you as well to follow along. And in Luke chapter 10, Jesus says to his disciples, his disciples are amazed because they go out and they're able to cast out demonic spirits. And he says to his disciples, I have given to you all power and all authority. He says, you shall be able, he says, you shall be able in verse 19, you shall be able to tread upon scorpions and they shall not harm you. You shall be able to cast out demons in my name and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. And this is powerful because it speaks a lot about a doctrine that is very prevalent in our culture that rejoices around the signs and not around the God that we serve. Do not rejoice over this, over this deliverance ministry, over this casting out of demons. Don't rejoice over that. The spirits are subject to you. Rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I want to ask you to take your right hand, place it over your left heart tonight, and let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, speak to the hearts of your people tonight. Work in their hearts, almighty God. Lord, let your word bring forth much fruit in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And since we are not allowed to shake hands, why not wink to 10 persons and then you may take your seat tonight. So 10 persons, give them a little wink and then you may take your seat tonight. Make sure and wink, right? Winking usually is one eye. If it's two eyes, that's a blink, not a wink. I want to speak to you tonight from the topic of break it down. We've been in a built it series. But before we can ever build something, we must break down the walls that separate us from what God has promised us. And I want to have a little heart to heart with you tonight. And to be honest, I backed out of preaching this message quite a few times during the week. Even this morning, I said, okay, it's Palm Sunday tomorrow. Let me change my message. Let me preach on Palm Sunday instead. Because tonight I'm going to be the most vulnerable that I've ever been on a public forum on this pulpit. Because I want to just really share from my heart tonight. And don't get me wrong, the story of Jericho is quite literal. They did fight that war. The walls did come crumbling down. And it does speak to a literal sense of God that is fighting for us. But I want to take a, a talk with you tonight from more of a 
metaphorical sense. The first verse, verse 1, it says that the walls of Jericho were shut up. They were shut up. And I want to preach and teach a little bit tonight from that aspect of Jericho being that place that you've guarded with walls inside of your heart. Jericho is that place where you have shielded and you've shut it in and you've pushed it deep, deep down. Jericho is that place of hurt, that place of trauma, that place of loss that you've tried to avoid and you've never dealt with. Notice Jericho is not the promised land, but it is the walls that stand between you and the land of Canaan, which is the promised land. And it's a necessity to break it down before you can ever build something. It's a necessity to break it down before you could ever build something. When I was 22 years old, I was convinced that no one would ever love me. I believed that. I really did. And I had gone through a period of time where I faced a lot of rejection. And I'm not speaking about from with my mom and dad or friends. I'm speaking about in a relationship sense between a man and a woman. And I was convinced that I was unlovable for whatever reasons at that period in my life. And around that time, I had just started dating Jessica. And even though I was in a relationship, because I didn't break down the hurt and pain that I was carrying on the inside, a lot of the times I would project onto her the pain that I was carrying. Not because she did anything wrong, but because I didn't deal with those emotions. I didn't deal with the fact that I thought I was unlovable. And sometimes if I didn't get every, enough attention, or I didn't get enough emotion, or I didn't get a gift, or I didn't get a text message, that would really cause some past pains to come up and then cause problems in this new relationship. And I had to go through a period of breaking those walls down, of healing before I could ever really love properly, before I could really have a healthy relationship. And for each one of us, we have that Jericho. We have that place in our life that represents something or someone that has hurt us so deeply that we haven't quite healed from it thoroughly. And tonight, God wants us to heal from that. God wants us to move into his promises, but we have to break down some walls first before we could ever move in. Because no matter how good of a building you build, if the foundation isn't good, no matter how much expensive material you pack into that building, even if you get the best woman in the world afterwards, it doesn't matter if the foundation isn't good, it doesn't matter how tall you build it, it's going to come crumbling down when the winds and waves and the storms of life come crashing in. And Jericho for you could maybe represent, like me, relationship hurt. It could even represent hurt between parents and kids. Maybe it could even represent abuse that you faced in your past. Maybe it could represent sexual abuse as well. Maybe it could represent public embarrassment, where you did something and someone scorned you for it or laughed at you for trying to speak up. It can mean so many different things. It can mean failures, where you attempted to do something before, you wrote exams and you failed. It can mean you tried to raise your kids, but you feel as though you failed because they're doing all the things you didn't want them to do. It could even represent trauma, something very traumatic that you went through, maybe a car accident, maybe the loss of someone that you love, something that has really left that pain on the inside, that hole on the inside, that emptiness on the inside. It could even be church hurt. And this is something we don't talk about a lot, but this is a real thing. Many people are hurt in churches. And yes, church ought to be a place of healing, and our church is a place for the broken, a place for the scarred, a place for the hurt. But many of us have experienced hurt in churches. Maybe there was someone that we looked up to as a role model, a pastor, that did something that was unbiblical, and that really hurt us. Or maybe it was just a leader in the church that treated us a certain way that we never expected to be treated in the confinements of safety of a worship place where God's presence is. I don't know what that really is for you tonight, but I know that each one of us have that place called Jericho. That place that we've shut the walls, we've closed it in, we've fortified the walls, we've strengthened it, and we've kept it hidden on the inside. And if we don't break those walls down, these walls down, they will lead to problems in the future. 
we won't really be able to build on a strong foundation. So look at what happens in the situation with Joshua. Joshua has to go in to Jericho. And as he's about to go in, God says to him, look at what he says in verse 2. We're going to throw it up on the screen. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 2. Joshua says, the Lord said to Joshua, look at this. He says, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. What did he say? He says, see, I have given given Jericho into your hands. And when it comes to battling the depression, when it comes to battling the hurt that you face, when it comes to that healing process, I want to assure you tonight that this word that God gave to Joshua is the same word that applies into your life. See, he has already given it into your hands. He has already given you the victory. He has given you the power to break down these walls. As a believer who has come to Christ, you work with the expectancy that you already will have the victory. You work with the understanding that all things work together for a good to them that love the Lord and are called unto his purpose. So you fight with the foreknowledge that you have already won. You fight with that knowledge. I remember in university, we had some courses that had heavy coursework, like about 80% of the marks to pass was just from doing coursework. And I loved those courses because it meant that once I did well in the coursework, I didn't really have to study for the finals. If I got 60% in my coursework, I already passed. I could relax, just go and sit down, hope for the best, I already passed, right? And that is how our walk with God is. When it comes to getting the victory, look at what he says. They haven't gone and marched as yet. The first thing he says when it comes to the instructions God gave to Joshua is, look and see, I have already given Jericho into your hands. And that place of hurt, those walls that have built up in your life that are a stumbling block to you really moving forward into God's purpose, into what God is calling you to do. God has given you the victory already. He has already given it into your hands. You have the victory in Christ Jesus. I want you to be assured of that tonight. You are not fighting or losing battle. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And when you know you already have the victory, there is no pressure to perform. When you know you already have the victory, there's no pressure to perform. Have you realized that in our society, if you aren't whole on the inside, there is this pressure and this stigma, like if something is wrong with you. As if it's wrong if you feel hurt. It's wrong if you carry some pain. And while, yes, man's rejection leads to God's perfection, you still get hurt in the process. You know, that, that song's nice, but you still get hurt when you are rejected. You still feel that pain. It doesn't negate that. But when you know that you already have the victory, there is no pressure to perform. Even if it takes some time, even if it doesn't happen overnight, you know that you have the victory, that you will make it out of this season. And I want to assure you that tonight, no matter what the face, the hurt and pain that you face right now, you will make it out of that season. You will have better days ahead. The Bible says that sorrow may last for how long? A night, but joy comes in the morning. That is not a literal night. That's not one night. It's metaphorical. It lasts for a period, but that season will come to an end. This too shall pass. And this is what God said to Joshua. I have already given you the victory. Look and see, the battle has already been won. And when Jesus comes into your life, the battle has already been won. Depression, suicide does not have a stronghold on your life. The pain and hurt must be uprooted. The walls must come crumbling down. They will fall. But we have to be honest as well with ourselves. Because that most of the times, we just avoid the reality. We pretend everything is okay, especially when we're in church. Especially when we're in church. Yeah, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. How was your week? I overcame it all. Did you really? 
We don't want to be real. We put on the most makeup, and I'm not speaking to our women, but we put on the most makeup to cover up the hurts. We hide the scars. I love what Jesus did. Jesus said, Thomas, put your hand in my hand. See where the nails pierce me. Put your hand in my side. See where the spear gutted me. Yes, I have scars. Yes, I have holes. Yes, I have pain. Yes, the enemy tried to take me out. Yes, he tried to kill me. But the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, Jesus rose from the grave. He overcame death, hell. He overcame sin. He gave life and he gave it abundantly. And yes, you may have scars. Stop hiding them. Roll the sleeves up. Let us see where you've been hurt. Tell others, hey, I have had some tough times. I've lost lost some things in my life. It hasn't all been well. It hasn't all been well. But Jesus healed me. Jesus won the victory for me. He overcame it all for me. So let's stop hiding the hurt that we face. Let's stop covering it up. And let's really deal with it. Because the more you avoid it, you just prolong the inevitable. Because you're not healing. You're not healing. You're just taking the expiration date and putting it to later down in your life. It's not that these problems will just magically go away. It's not that this pain and hurt will just leave you. You have to heal. You have to go through that process. This Friday, I did a funeral Friday morning, and I would always tell people, the family, they lost their dad unexpectedly to a heart attack. And I would always tell people who were in a time of grief and mourning, this takes time. You won't wake up tomorrow morning and be healed from the pain that you feel. It takes time. But you can't hide the grief and avoid the grief. Sometimes you just got to cry it all out. Have you ever had a cry so good that you feel better after? Sometimes you just got to let it all out. Sometimes you just got to come to God, bend it before the altar, and cry before his face and say, God, I'm hurting, and I cast my burdens on you. God, I cry before you because I am in pain. And guess what? Jesus understands the pain that you feel. The Bible says he's well acquainted with our grief and our infirmity. You know what's the shortest verse in Scripture? Two words. Jesus wept. Why? Logically, that makes no sense. Why? He was about to raise Lazarus, his friend who had died from the grave. So why cry? And sometimes we, we uh, abuse Paul's writing where it says, you ought, ought not to mourn like the people of the world because you have a hope in Christ. So you say, don't cry. Don't hurt. It's go you don't have to. You're a Christian. Christians shouldn't cry. But Paul was speaking about not mourning and being in a place of hopelessness. He wasn't saying that you won't hurt, that you won't cry sometimes. If Jesus wept, who are you? Who am I that I would try to be this macho man that I have no feelings, that I'm not hurt on the inside? Jesus wept when he saw Mary and Martha in pain. And sometimes your family may cry with you. Sometimes the people you love, they will cry with you because they understand the hurt that you're feeling. But your tears are not in vain. Every teardrop that falls to the ground is a teardrop that signifies to God healing has to happen. And this process is going to begin and it's going to start in your life, and you are going to heal. But let's stop hiding. Why was Jericho hiding? Because some level, they were afraid of change. They didn't want to change. They had fortified walls, and they hid shut inside their doors. And sometimes we're afraid of what happens when we let ourselves heal. Because we've become so accustomed to carrying this pain. <laughs> what would it be like if we're not carrying it anymore? How would I live if I don't hold on to this unforgiveness in my heart anymore? We're afraid at times at changing, at growing. Because we've become so accustomed to carrying pain and hurt that it becomes part of who we are. And while pain and hurt is there for us to grow and learn from, it does not define you. The abuse you face does not define you. It does not define who you are. 
This is a pain that has happened to you. This is something that has caused you great, significant tears and nights where you have turmoil, but this is not who you are. The pain serves a purpose to perfect you into the person that God has called you to be. So don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of who you would become. Because let me tell you who you would become. You would become a person that lives in the fulfillment of all God has promised you. You would have healthy relationships. You would have a healthy family life. You would be able to raise your children the right way. You won't get angry every time they back answer you because you know that God is working in their life. You won't get angry every time your spouse doesn't text you because you know that God loves you and they love you. You would be able to live a life that is fulfilling. And you won't be projecting the pains of the past into the present moments. Because every time you project the pain from the past into a present moment, you're not really moving forward. You're living in the past. How long will the pain that you've experienced dictate your life? How long will it determine the decisions that you make? How long will it determine whether you open up to someone or you don't? Whether you really be honest with the people around you or you close up and be isolated and you just live within doors. You know, isolation is one of the key tools of the enemy to bring you to a place where you find depression knocking at your door. Because it's in isolation when you self-isolate, when you shut your doors in, when you shut the walls of Jericho in and you just keep to yourself. It's in isolation that depression comes in. It's in isolation that insanity comes in. It's in isolation that all the, the words of evil, the enemy whispers in your ears. He tells you things like you're not good enough, like you're a failure, like you'll never be better, that you'll never be all that God calls you to be, that you'll never love properly, that no one will ever love you. It's an isolation that he whispers all these words. And you got to come out of isolation. You got to open up the doors and come out if you really want to be healed. So he said to them, go in. Go into Jericho and see that I have given this land already into your hand. Let's go to verse 3 that we've been reading from. He says, okay, see, I've already given it to you. I've given it into your hand. So you shall march around the city, all you men of war. Who does he send first? He sends the men of war. And you shall go around the city once. This you shall do for six days. Now look at verse 4. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark. So who went first? The men of war went first. And then secondly, the priests went first afterwards and the priest represents the servants of god so they sent the soldiers and the servants out first to march around the walls of jericho and then the people followed and when it comes to breaking down walls in your life you have to know that it's necessary to be a soldier and to be a servant you got to know you're going in to fight this battle but you're also going to be humble enough to serve in this battle. You're going in to fight and break down these walls, but you're also going to be open to what God is telling you to do. You're not going to be arrogant and say that I am a warrior. I can fight however I want, but you're going to follow the leadership of God. And what did the priest take? The priest took the ark. And I told you last week that the ark represents the presence of God and the power of God. And as important as it is to take God into those places where you are building something, it's even more of a necessity to have God in those seasons when you are breaking down strongholds. And it's easy at times to say, I want God to build. But at times when we have to carry God into the places of hurt to break things down, we don't want to carry God there. We don't want to go that place with God. We don't want to have God in that season. We want to handle it 
on our own? How many times are we trying to deal with it on our own? Are we trying to find people to help us, programs to help us, but we're not letting God help us? It's more important in the seasons of breaking things down that we have the presence of God. He made sure and tell, tell them, take the ark and march with the ark. You got to march and serve. You got to be a soldier and a servant with God by your side. You got to know God is marching with me. God is is going before me he is circling around these walls and the power and the presence of God in my life is able to break every chain break every stronghold and cause some real healing to occur so he says to them go march around the walls okay they have to march around the walls they have to go around how many times one time for six days right one time for six days. And every time they go around, these, these were, or this city was a big city. So it would take them almost the entire day to go and walk right around the walls. Which means that in the process of walking around the walls of Jericho, they would have become weary. They would have become tired. They would have had moments where their feet would have been just dragging on the floor. They would have been thirsty. They would have been hungry, thinking, are we to the end yet? Are we there yet? Are we healed yet? But they would still keep marching because they had to go around the walls. But when night came, every night, they sat and they rested and they recharged for the next day ahead. And that is so important. They sat and they rested and they recharged for the next day ahead. The walls didn't fall yet, but they still sat and they rested and they recharged for the next day ahead. The problems didn't go away as yet, but they sat and they rested and they recharged for the next day ahead. They won't heal as yet, but they sat and they rested and they recharged for the next day ahead. I rejoice over the people who come to God and in a moment they are healed by the miracle working power of God. But for the other 75% of us, it takes some time. It takes some days, some weeks, some months, some years. It took me close to a year before I was healed of that emotional pain that I was carrying. But it takes some time walking around the walls of Jericho, marching around saying, God, I'm not giving up. I know these walls must come crumbling down. For some of us, it takes a little while for healing to occur. But here's what, every time they sat, they rested, they recharged for the day ahead. You might be, not be able to solve the food that you feel in one day, in one week, in one year. But it's important, every time you make progress, they completed one day, that's good, only five days left. They sat, they rested, and they recharged. Because many of the times we run around so much trying to fix us that we don't sit, rest and recharge and now we're running on empty and you can't do any good if you're running on empty you can't make it around the walls of jericho if you don't have the strength to do it as much as you need to be spiritually strong this body needs to be strong as well because what affects you in the physical will affect you in the spiritual and if this body is weak if this body is weary then how will you be able to march around the walls how will you be able to keep going and let that healing process occur you gotta sit you gotta rest and you gotta recharge who do you rest in you rest in god who is your source to plug in and recharge God is not Facebook not social media not mom not dad I gotta plug into God every night I'm not gonna plug into YouTube for two hours I gotta plug into God I gotta rest in prayer I gotta rest in worship and I gotta recharge for tomorrow because there's a wall that must come crumbling down and I need the power of God in my life so they sat they rested and they recharged please Please hear me out. Sometimes people are burnt out even in church and in ministry. And that's why I've tried so much not to make our church a place where 
It's all about the services and not the people being serviced by God. Because sometimes you just grow so weary, just doing, doing, doing. You're, you move from being Mary to Martha. Well, yeah, you're doing something needful. You're doing something good. Yes, preparation needs to occur. The house needs cleaning. The gospel needs to go forth. But you got to do like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus. Rest in his presence and just recharge. This is what Saturday night should be all about. Sitting in his presence, resting and recharging. Because tomorrow, <laughs> the battle is still going to be there. And you're still going to be fighting. But you need to rest and recharge if you're really going to fight tomorrow. Tomorrow, there are going to be bigger giants to slay. Tomorrow, there's going to be new devils to face. So why run on empty? Rest and recharge in his presence so you can really have the power to fight those battles that you face. So every night they rested and they recharge. And the next day they started walking again. They started marching around the walls and they marched and marched. And the Bible says on the seventh day, they marched around seven times. So every day they marched. On the seventh day, they marched around seven times. Now, it was already hard enough for them to march around one time each day, right? It was already hard enough to go through the healing process for one period of your life. But on the seventh day, they had to march around seven times. In the Bible, seven is a number of completion. So if they marched for seven days, it meant they had already completely exhausted their physical strength. They had completely exhausted their ability. But yet on the seventh day, on the day when you are most weary, on the point where you feel like giving up, where you feel as though this is not working. I've been marching. I've been going around the cities. I've been praying for breakthrough, but these walls aren't coming down. Right at the point of giving up, God says to them, not once, not twice, not three, not four, not five, not six, but I want you to completely give it your all and march seven times on the seventh day. And God wants you to know that even though you might be growing weary, even though it might be taking some time, even though it might be feeling like you've given it all, you got to keep going and give it completely over to God. You got to fight and give all you got in it. You can't give up. On the seventh day, they marched seven times. They were weary, they were tired, but they kept on marching. They kept on going and you might be tired. You might be weary, but I came tonight to tell you just keep going don't give up god said he will give jericho into your hands the walls will come crumbling down so i'm gonna keep marching i'm gonna keep walking i'm gonna break it down i'm gonna break down generational curses i'm gonna break down all the pain that has been left on the inside and the walls will come crumbling down on the seventh day on the seventh time they shouted where did they get that strength from? After marching around for seven days, after giving it all, where did they find the strength to worship God? I know we come to hear from God. We come to hear from his word. I know Saturdays it's nighttime and you're tired, you're exhausted. Where did they find the strength to worship God? But if they didn't worship, the walls wouldn't have that was the most crucial part. On the seventh day, at the seventh time, you shall shout when you hear the trumpet. When the musical instruments begin to play, you shall shout. And when you shout, then the walls will come crumbling down. 
even when you feel like you can't praise God and you can't say hallelujah to his name and you can't glorify his name, that is the most crucial point to shout and let the walls come crumbling down. You can walk, you can walk and you can keep going but until you say I'm going to worship God even when I'm worried, I'm going to worship God even when I'm weary, I'm going to worship God even when I'm not seeing the results. When you say God even if you don't give me what I ask for, it's not about what I can get but it's about humbly subjecting to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords and it's in that moment where you say God I will worship you even though I don't see it in front of me I'm going to worship you almighty God when you make that shout when you make that cry, when you declare God you are God over my life, you are God over my Jericho, you are God over my pain, it's when they shouted the walls came crumbling down and it fell to the ground. And verse 20 tells us, they marched in and took Jericho. And from Jericho, they moved into Canaan, the promised land. You will make it into God's promises. But before you can build, you got to break some things down. Before you can really build a life that honors God, you got to break down that hurt from maybe relationships, maybe abuse, maybe church hurt, maybe loss and death in the family, maybe generational curses. You got to break those things down first before you could really build something that stands for God in this generation. And the walls came crumbling down. The walls came crumbling down. I want to close in Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. And as we read the scripture, we're going to move into a time where we really cry out before God and let that healing occur in his presence. Look at what Jesus says. His disciples returned to him and they said, the 70 of them, they said, Joy, God, we have been able to, we've seen demons are subject in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give to who? I give to you. I give to you. Not the pastor. I give to you. I give to each one of you. Each one who has accepted Jesus. I have given you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Even if it takes you this whole lifetime to get those walls broken down, you can still rejoice every day because your name is in heaven. But Christ has given you all power and all authority. You have that power. He has given it over to you as a believer, as you've accepted Jesus. He has given you that power to break those walls down. Whatever that Jericho is in your life that has those fortified walls that has surrounded it, God has given you all power and all authority to break down those walls. And tonight in his presence, as you say yes to Jesus, as you say, Jesus, I surrender to you. As you say, Jesus, I'm weary and I'm weak but I know a God that is strong in my weaknesses I know a God that by his stripes I am healed as you come to him and say God you have all power and authority and I want to use that power and that authority you have given to my life to declare that I am healed the walls of Jericho are falling down I will build something that honors God and the pain and hurt shall not stop me it shall not stand between me and the promises of God. I shall live a fulfilled life. I shall live an overcoming life because Jesus has given me all power and all authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Why not stand to your feet tonight? Keep the clap going. Honor him. Shout a note of praise. On the seventh time, they shouted. They blowed the hark. They shouted unto God and they said, worship and praise unto your name. The walls are going to come crying. 
crumbling down. The walls are going to come crashing down. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. A new day is here. Joy is here. Purpose is here. Because Jesus came and he gave you the power. Hallelujah to his name. Hallelujah to his name. Heavenly Father, oh, we magnify your name in this house. God, we give you all praise that is due unto you, God. Oh, you are our mighty healer. Oh, you are our mighty healer. You are able not just to heal our body, not just to heal what is on the outside, but the hurt that is hidden on the inside that no one else sees, that no one else understands. We walk around and we can hide what's on the inside, but we can't hide from God because God searches the heart of man and he sees the pain. He feels the emotion. He knows what you've been through, but he has declared that he has made you an overcome. He has given you all power. He has given you all authority. Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus rose from the grave so that you could defeat everything that meant to kill you. It meant to harm you. It won't harm you anymore because all power, all authority has been given into your hands. So Heavenly Father, we ask God for the power of your Holy Spirit that is already in this atmosphere, to move now and touch every heart here. Touch every person, oh God, as they've cried out to you. Oh God, they may be weary. It's been a long time. But tonight, God, they want to really live a purposeful life. And they need healing to move forward. They need the walls to come crashing down before they could really build what you've placed on their heart, before they could build that family, before they could build that life, before they could build that business, before they could build that relationship, before they could build that marriage. Oh God, they need that healing, God. For too long, God, they've projected the pains of the past into the present, and it's caused arguments, it's caused division, it's caused the good things in life, God, that you've given them to be turned into a bad thing, God. But God, not anymore, not any longer. Tonight is the night for healing. Tonight is the night for the walls of Jericho to come crumbling down, God. So all the walls that have been fortified, they stand nothing against the force and power of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, move now in this atmosphere. Touch every heart. Touch every heart. They are saying yes to Jesus. Jesus, they need you. Jesus, they want you. They've tried on their own. They've tried the programs. They've tried the counseling. They've tried all the things that man can prescribe. They've tried marching around Jericho without the ark, without the presence, without the power. But tonight, they are taking the presence of God with them. They are marching with the power power of God around the walls of Jericho and in the name of Jesus we declare these walls shall come crumbling down we declare these walls shall come crumbling down depression shall fall to the ground pain and hurt suicide isolation shall come crashing to the ground every pain that has been left and is lingering in their life we uproot it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, faith as small as a mustard seed is able to say to the mulberry tree, no matter how deep the roots are, no matter how far into my past this goes, no matter how many generations this has affected, no matter how long it has been here, no matter how deep, just a little faith is able to say to that big mulberry tree that has those big roots that has penetrated deep into your soul, spirit, and heart be uprooted now and be cast away so in the name of Jesus we uproot every tree every mulberry tree every mulberry tree that has been deeply rooted in the hearts of your people we uproot it now in the mighty name of Jesus for who the son of God has set free is free indeed Jesus came so that those that are oppressed shall receive freedom that those those that are depressed shall live in the joy of the Lord, that those whose sentence was death will have life and will have it more abundantly. Lord, let your people live in the fullness of your glory. Fullness, God. Fullness, God. No longer the partiality, God. 
No longer will they stand outside the walls of Jericho and try to make it around the wall, try to get around the wall to get to Canaan. But God, they got to go through. They got to go through. The walls need to fall down and they got to go through into your promises. Let them live in the fulfillment of your glory, the fullness of your glory. Like Moses said, let me see the fullness of your glory. We want the fullness, God. We want the fullness in our life. No more partiality. No more just a little bit. Just enough to get me through half a day. We want the fullness. We want the spirit of Jesus living in the inside. Spirit of Jesus live on the inside. Spirit of Jesus dwell in the vessels of honor that you have created. Sanctify them. Wash them in the blood of Jesus. And they will be a vessel for your spirit to dwell in your spirit to live in. Let the power of Jesus reside in the people of God. Let it live inside of them that they will use and they will talk and they will exercise and they will speak with all power, all power, all power, all power, all power and authority that you have given unto them to trample over serpents, scorpions, and they shall not harm them. No act of the enemy shall destroy their life what the enemy has meant for evil god you've meant it for good hallelujah all power all power all power i declare in this house all power all power all power holy spirit holy spirit rest now on your people fall afresh oh let them sit rest recharge 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 as they plugged into the source tonight let there be a recharge 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 living water living water springing up on the inside a well that will never run dry a well that will never run empty they will be like a tree planted by living waters they bear fruit in every season even in the seasons where they have not made it all the way around the walls of jericho even in the seasons when they are still dealing with the hurt they will still be fruitful god they will be planted by the source their roots will always be supplied with the source that is Jesus Christ and they shall bear fruit in every season God in seasons of drought in seasons of pain in seasons of hardship in seasons of joy in seasons of great accomplishments in every season in seasons of COVID-19 in seasons of recession in every season they will bring forth fruit men will be able to taste and see that the Lord Lord is good because of their life that is built on Jesus. So we break down so that we can build up. We can build something that is a blessing to others, that is a blessing to this generation, that is a blessing to the people that we meet, that is a blessing to our community, that is a blessing, a blessing, a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name. We praise you, almighty God. We thank you for the victory. Look and see. God has given Jericho into your hands. Look and see. Look and see. It's already yours. He has already won the victory. The battle has already been fought. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Look and see, you have already won the battle. Hallelujah, God. We receive it by faith tonight. Hallelujah, we receive it by faith tonight. It is finished in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Why not give God a loud clap offering?